So good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, we are here today to talk to you about a project we have been working on for several months now with Guillaume, which is a Vagrant provider for OpenStack. So just to quickly introduce ourselves, I'm Julien Vey. I work at Numergy on OpenStack development. And I'm Guillaume, and I work at Numergy as well here in Paris, and I mainly develop applications and services uh, on top of OpenStack API. So first, who here already use Vagrant? Okay, so main, almost everyone. So Vagrant is a tool to create and destroy development environments and to automate the creation of your environment. It's repeatable. It means you can build, destroy environments in a second. Uh, we run them, we start them, we load them. It's configurable. You have only one file to configure all your development environment, which is a Vagrant file that we'll show later. And it's easy to use. It's a simple CLI to command uh, your, uh, your development environment. So as I say, first step is describe your environment in a Vagrant file. This is a really simple Vagrant file that just takes uh, two parameters. First one is the box. Uh, you can uh, see it like the OpenStack image. Its uh, operating system will use to create our instances. And second parameter is a provisioning script. Uh, with in this environment, I just want to install Git and be able to, to use it. So once you have created your Vagrant file, in the same folder, you just run Vagrant up, and you are ready to go. That's all you need to, uh, to get started to create your environment. So as you imagine, uh, Vagrant manages virtual instances. And these instances have a, have a life cycle. First, they are not created. When you run Vagrant up, they become active. You can suspend and resume them. You can stop and restart them. And when you destroy your environments, uh, they go back to not created. You have some specific Vagrant uh, actions. For instance, SSH, that enables you to connect to your instance. Status, just to see uh, where, uh, what the state of your instance is. And provisioning to run a provisioning script like a shell script I saw before, or Puppet, or Chef, or anything. And so Vagrant manages man manage your instances, and it uses providers in the background to create and destroy virtual machines. Uh, the default one is uh, VirtualBox, but you have these four built-in providers. So VirtualBox, VMware, Docker, and Hyper-V. And when I run Vagrant up, I have one VirtualBox VM that is created on my local machine. If I have only one development environment, it's OK. It's not uh, I have enough memory to run it. But if I start to have 10, 15, 20 development environments on my local computer, I will have some troubles. Because my local resources are limited. Even if you have a big fat computer with uh, 32 gigabytes of, memories, of memory, you won't be able to create as many environments as you want. So the solution uh, for this is that we need to find more resources. And obviously, we are the OpenStack Summit. So where can we find more resources? In the, cl in the cloud. So cloud resources are virtually unlimited. They are just limited by your credit card. So as long as you, as you can pay for your instances, you can create your Vagrant environments on uh, cloud resources. So before talking about Vagrant and OpenStack together, a little bit more about Vagrant itself. Uh, Vagrant architecture is based on a plugin system, and most of Vagrant building features are implemented as a plugin. And uh, in the community, we can find a lot of uh, plugin to do a lot of stuff like provisioning instance, we can, we, there is a plugin to configure the host machine, the guest machine. With a plugin, we can uh, extend the Vagrant lifecycle, we can extend the Vagrant command line interface, etc. And of course, providers are plugin as well. And for instance, you can uh, manage uh, KVM virtual machine using the Vagrant KVM provider, you can manage Linux container with the uh, LXC provider, and it exists plugins to um, interface Vagrant with uh, cloud providers, for instance, Amazon Web Services, and we work on a provider for OpenStack. 
Um, first of it, first of all, why do we need an OpenStack provider? As Julien said before, on your local machine or even on a single hypervisor, resources are limited. And on the cloud, you can scale, you can deploy a lot of machine. Well, I guess this point is obvious for everybody here. So I will not uh, cover more in detail this topic, but there is another point. It's about shareable environment. Um, when you create an environment in your local system, you create this environment for you and just you, but in some case, you want to create an environment and share this environment with other people, with your team, for instance. And this point is very interesting, and we'll discuss about this point uh, later in the talk. Let's start with a quick example to see how to use the background provider and what's happened behind the scene when we use it. So we have to write a background file. A basic background file starts with any other background file, background configure, and a block in which we will configure our provider. And first thing we have to configure is uh, how to connect to our OpenStack. We need the endpoint URL to uh, connect to Keystone and credential and the tenant background we're working in. And then we have to supply information about the instance we want to create. And the minimal information we have to supply is uh, the flavor and the image. And the last thing is to give background the name of the floating IP pool to make the instance accessible uh, outside from the OpenStack and generally over the internet. With this background file, I can simply, simply run background up. And this time, I um, provide the option dash dash provider to say to Vagrant which provider he has to use. Because if we don't do that, it will try to use the default provider, which is a virtual box, and it won't work. So what's happened when I run Vagrant up? Uh, first, Vagrant will send a good, um, an authentication query on Keystone, and it will receive in return the token and the service catalog. In this service catalog, it will get the Nova URL, and then it can uh, send a query to Nova to create the instance. But to create this instance, uh, Vagrant needs the flavor ID and the image ID. And in the Vagrant file, we uh, mentioned the image name and the flavor name. So we have first to resolve uh, IDs from name, image, and flavor. Then we have to resolve the floating IP. This step is a bit more complicated, but basically it consists in get an IP. And then we, will, we can use this IP to, we can assign this IP to the, as the instance. Julien will talk about this feature uh, more in detail uh, later. Now we can create the instance on Nova and assign it the floating IP. At this point, this instance is probably uh, in state build on OpenStack, and we have to wait for the instance to be built, and then wait again to the instance being access accessible using SSH. And when it's done, uh, we are in a normal Vagrant lifecycle, and Vagrant will maybe try to sync folders to run provisioner and so on, and then Vagrant up is done. With this Vagrant file, uh, as uh, we saw, it involves only two OpenStack services, Keystone and Nove. For some other feature, we will see later, we will, it will require other services like Neutron, for instance, or Cinder. So, in the provider, we support all these native uh, Vagrant commands, uh, up alt, span resume, SSH reload provisions. But we have also developed uh, some specific features that we'll talk about. And the first one is SSH key generation. So, if you, in the Vagrant file Guillaume just showed you, there, was no, there were no SSH configuration. So, no private key path, no public key path, no key per name. How does it work in the provider? When you run Vagrant up, we generate an SSH key pair, both private and public key. We automatically store the private, uh, the private key locally in the Vagrant metadata directory, and we'll upload the public key to Nova. So this way, when we start, uh, when we launch the instance, 
We just give it the name that we just uploaded to Nova, and everything uh, will work. And when you run any SSH actions, for instance, Vagrant SSH, we'll use the private key that was generated previously to connect to the instance. So if you already, if you already work with other providers, uh, Vagrant Workspace, AWS, they all need uh, SSH configuration. So keys are generated in the Vagrant metadata directory. They are generated with a name uh, Vagrant generated and a hash. So it's easy for you to debug your SSH connection with uh, just adding the key when you run the SSH command. So SSH configuration is no longer needed, but you can still override this. You can provide your own public key, your own key pair name for Nova, or say, I want to use this private key. You have all this option in, uh, in the provider. The next feature, uh, the next feature <coughs> is the floating <coughs> API location. First way to go is to directly uh, tell Vagrant that I want to use this specific floating IP. This IP has to be alloc already allocated and not assigned in your, uh, in your OpenStack tenant. And we'll just use, the, use this one and uh, assign uh, this IP to the, uh, to the instance we create. The more generic way to do is to use the public pool, OS floating IP pool. And what we do uh, when you provide this option, first we'll try to look for an already allocated IP that is not assigned and that belongs to this pool. If we find one, we take it and we assign it. If we don't find one, we'll try to allocate a new one. And if it's failed, we just fail the vagrant uh, command. Now, about network configuration, if you remember the quick start example, there was no network configuration in it. If you do that, uh, the background will don't provide any network configuration to Nova, and this works only if there is uh, only one network available in your tenant. If you want to uh, configure your network, you can do it. Basically, it's, uh, you just need to uh, provide information uh, to the provider using the network's attribute, and you can give it a network name or network ID. So uh, Nova expects a network ID, and if you supply a network name, Vagrant will have to make a resolution to get a list of networks and to, to, get the, to find if there is a network with this name to get the ID, and it will use this ID to uh, go through Nova. And if you do that, uh, you will get an IP address using DHCP. See, if you don't want using DHCP or if you don't have it on your network, you can explicitly um, configure an IP address, and this IP address must match with a subnet already existing in your network. Um, next feature is about volume. If you have existing cinder volume in your, in your tenant, you can attach volume on uh, the instance. The configuration is quite similar to the network configuration. You can uh, provide the ID or the name. The resolution mechanism is the same. And optionally, you can uh, configure the device name on which the uh, volume will be accessible in your oper operating system. We can also boot from view volume. In the example, we boot from an image, an image already present in the Glance catalog. We can, if you have a bootable volume, instead of specifying the OS.image uh, attribute, we can use the volume boot attribute and specify an ID or name of volume we want to use. About custom commands. Um, to write a background file, as we saw, we need a lot of uh, open stack information, we need flavor ID or name, the same for the image, networks, volume, etc. And to get this information, we have to query the OpenStack API or to go to the um, web console horizon. And when we using Vagrant, we don't want to do that because using Vagrant, the, the, the goal of using Vagrant is to make it simple. So when we use Vagrant, we don't want to have to go to other systems to get information. So we implement a plugin inside the, inside the component. 
which extends the Vagrant command line interface. It adds uh, an OpenStack command with uh, some subcommands. For instance, we can type Vagrant OpenStack image list, and we will get uh, a list of the image in the CLI, and we can just pick up the ID or the name of the image and put it in the Vagrant file. We have the same for uh, all the needed uh, OpenStack objects, network, for instance, and so on. And now we will do a demonstration of how it works uh, against a real OpenStack. So uh, the demo will involve two instances. We have a back instances, and we will install on this instance uh, a MongoDB database, and a front-end instances on which we will install a web application that connect to the MongoDB database. And we have a Cinder volume attached to the MongoDB database, and we will configure the instance uh, during the provisioning to make the data, the, the storage of the MongoDB on the volume, persistent volume rather, on the uh, instance storage. I'll just switch on screen. OK. So we'll start from a um, fresh tenant on an OpenStack cloud. Uh, you see that we have no instances. Uh, if I go to access securities, we have no key pair. We have two floating IPs that are already allocated but are not assigned. And as Guillaume said, we have a volume that is ready uh, to store the MongoDB uh, uh, data. So what I will first do, uh, here if I look uh, at the content of my directory, I have a wagon file and some uh, SASH script that we will, uh, that I will explain later. So, <coughs> sorry. First, I will see that I have no instances that are running. Here, uh, when I run Vagrant status, it will read my Vagrant file. I will just show it. And it says that I have two instances, Mongo back, Mongo front, and they are not created. What you see here, that it's, it detects uh, VirtualBox as a provider. Because um, if I just run Vagrant up without any option, it will use VirtualBox to run my uh, configuration. You can have a Vagrant file that configures multiple providers and just run Vagrant up, provider OpenStack, Vagrant up, provider workspace, anything. So here I would just, uh, I would just Vagrant up, uh, giving him the provider option, which is OpenStack, and we let it run, uh, and I will show you the Vagrant file. So here my instance are starting to be created, build, okay. So this is the Vagrant file. So this is my Vagrant file. It's okay. It's okay. So this is my Vagrant file. As Guillaume said, I just this is the basic uh, thing you have to do in Vagrant. And here I will configure my provider OpenStack, uh, giving the credentials. Uh, OpenStack, Cultural, Tenant Name, Design Password, the configuration of my images. And here we just say sync method none, because by default, when you start Vagrant, it will sync your current folder with the slash Vagrant uh, directory on your, ma on your, on your um, instance. Here we have, there is nothing that we want to share, so we just disable it and, it's, and it go faster. So this configuration uh, is for the provider. But just after, I define two instances. I will define the Mongo back instance and the Mongo front instance. So all the configuration I had in the previous block will be shared, will be shared between these two, uh, these two instances. So just check if everything is OK. So as you said, we have a Mongo back instance. Uh, we want to take a floating IP from a pool. We assign some networks. Uh, my Mongo back instance will be on a netback network with a static IP, a fixed IP address, so that it can be joined uh, the same way from my uh, web interface. And I have some provisioning script. The first one is just install Mongo packages, or run Mongo. 
And the second one, which is insert data, we just create some data, some fake data in our uh, MongoDB, just to show you after on the web interface. And here we create just uh, two documents, that are two French car from Bruno. And, and, yeah, and we insert it, uh, we give it as a provisioning of my instance. For the Mongo font, it's almost the same thing, except that here I override the image. We have created an image uh, to run faster, which already contains uh, almost all the packages we need for this image. So we use it, and it overrides the previous configuration uh, in, the pro in the OpenStack provider. Same thing, we give it a name. We, di we directly assign a floating IP, and we attach this instance to another network, which is NetFont. So my both my instances are on different networks. So it should be OK. So here, I'll just go back. So this is uh, the log of um, my vagrant up command. And here, we are launching the server with the following settings, means that we have resolved everything. You see that we have the image that is in the vagrant file, and we have resolved the image reference, as Guillaume uh, explained before. Same for the flavor and for the network. So I'll go in my um, in my open stack. So I should have my two instances created. Uh, they are both created. They both have an IP address. The volume that was uh, created before is attached to the MongoBack instance. And in access and security, I see that I have two keepers that have been generated. And if I go back in my shell, and I just look at the content of the Vagrant directory, I have the same keeper that is in uh, the metadata folder. So this, uh, we generate one keeper per instance. Because when you run Vagrant commands, you can uh, specify on which instance you want uh, to run something. For instance, I could just Vagrant up Mongo back or Vagrant up Mongo front. So we have one key that is generated uh, per instance. I can show you the network configuration. So I have my two, my two networks, net back, net front. My Mongo front is attached to this one, and my Mongo back is attached to the next one. So what we'll do now, just check command line that uh, my instances are active. And I will just destroy. Uh, no, go to the web interface first. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so the goal was to provide a web interface for MongoDB. So we'll at least show it. So here, I just take the floating IP of my, Mo of my Mongo font. And I have access to Mongo Express, which is just a simple UI to visualize your, your uh, MongoDB database. And if I go in my uh, collection calls, I see the two documents that I created before in my Vagrant file in the provisioning script. So, Vagrant destroy? <laughs> <laughs> he loves destroy instances. Yeah. So, Vagrant destroy. And it should be really fast. Deleting server one, deleting server two, and it's done. And if I'm fast enough, we'll see that the instance are being deleted right now. So, OK. Everything has been destroyed. When you run Vagrant Destroy, what we do in the provider is that we remove everything that was created by the provider. It means that in the, um, in the key pairs, on Nova, you don't have anymore the key pair that were generated. So you don't have a stack of key that uh, keeps growing when you run your, um, your development environments. And here, same in my uh, current folder. I still have the folder for my uh, instances, but everything is empty. And I think that's all. Now we'll to talk about a uh, shareable environment. Um, 
if you want to provide an environment for your team, for instance, you will define a vagrant file with a one, two, three, n machine, and you vagrant up, and you want to give to your team the capabilities to uh, manage uh, this environment, to do vagrant SSH or vagrant destroy, and so on. It can be useful to do that, and if, you, if we try to... Oh, it doesn't work. Take mine. If we want to do that, uh, let's, let's go with an example. It will be more clear, I think. If I am on a machine A and I run a background up with a specific background file, it will spawn an instance of OpenStack. And then uh, there is uh, another developer from my team, which is on another machine, and he wants to do background destroy. It won't work, because it don't have the background metadata, the dot background directory, uh, Julien showed before, and what we want to do is uh, make this uh, vagrant destroy uh, possible. So to do that, we introduce a new plugin which is under development and will be soon open source at this address. Uh, the, the idea is to vagrant up like uh, before, and then we want to uh, store the dot vagrant directory on an external storage system. Uh, object storage, for instance, is a good candidate, OpenStack Swift. And we can run a command vagrant takeaway push to store all the vagrant metadata to the system. Then on another machine, I will take a vagrant takeaway pull to get, to get the information. And then I can work on the machine B as if I am on the machine A and do a vagrant destroy, SSH, or any other command I want. Um, this can be useful to work in team, as I said before, and it's also useful when you work from different computers. For instance, I often uh, work at home and I create environment, and then when I am home, I want to destroy it, to start continue to work on it, and I often zip the dot vagrant, send it manually, and get it back, and it's not really optimal. Um, so it will be in GitHub in a few weeks, and yes? How does the key sharing work in that model? Sorry? How do you get the private SSH number variated up to the other key sharing? Oh, but the, the SSH private key are stored in the dot vagrant directory. Ah, for... Okay, no, uh, but no, for, for this system, we don't uh, implement the authentication mechanism, but I think it will probably be a, a symmetric, en symmetric encryption, and the key must be already shared between the hosts, of course. It's a kind of ma master key. Yeah. Actually, here, when we say push, we just zip the vagrant directory and send it. So everything that is in the vagrant directory will be available on the other machines, including the private key that was generated. Ah, that was the point. Does it work with the vagrant directory in Git? You can. You, we, you yes. could have a storage uh, system Git. Actually, uh, this will be not a plugin, but a set of plugins. We will provide a plugin vagrant takeaway. We implement the, the mechanism of pull and push, and then, and then we will implement providers plugin for vagrant takeaway. Uh, basically, it's just implementing an interface, um, uh, implementing method push and pull. And if you want to do this on GitHub, no problem for doing that. Actually, if, well, if I understand the question, the, if you have a project on GitHub, you don't want to store your vagrant uh, directory on your uh, Git repository. Because you don't want to share your private key with anyone. So here we will have some authentication to have uh, for the storage system. Yes. yes. Uh, not yet, I think. Uh, mm. At the beginning, it would, at the moment, it, it was a pattern name, but now I think it's a fixed name. But uh, yes, it's interesting to do that. Actually, it's, it's everything in the background file is, uh, is Ruby. So you can just write a simple f Ruby function to do that.
Let's go. We just finish and uh, take cash on after, I think. Continue. So, yeah, so. so just to sh talk a little about the roadmap, what we want to do. We have some area we want to improve. The first one is to improve the private instances usage. Uh, right now, for each instance in uh, the Vagon file, we assign a floating IP, and we work with this floating IP to configure, to provision, anything. What we want to do is to have, for a multi-machine environment, to have only one uh, floating IP that is necessary. Uh, we have thought of two ways to do this. First one is to have a moving floating IP that we assign to the instance we want to provision. Then, when we want to provision another instance, we just move the floating IP. The second, uh, second way to do this is to have a proxy server in our instances that will be uh, that needs to be connected to the other instances, and we could do all the configuration through this proxy. Another thing we want to do is to upload the images in Gland automatically. Right now, in the OS image configuration, you need to give the name of an image that already uh, that is already uploaded uh, and available on your uh, Gland catalog. So we want to be able to, in the Vagrant file, give a local path or URL to automatically upload the image in Glance. And we want to manage snapshots, both volume and instances. So if you want to contribute, uh, first thing, if you are a cloud provider, we'd really like to hear from you because, as we heard uh, since Monday, there are many ways to install OpenStack. There are many ways to configure OpenStack. And we haven't tested the provider on all the different options. We have that seed on some that, uh, that are available to us, but we really like to test it more broadly to everyone that has an OpenStack cloud. If you are a developer, same thing, test the provider. And of course, contribute code. We have added a label for all the issues in GitHub, that is quick win. It's like the low and geek fruits label in uh, Launchpad for OpenStack projects. Everything that is labeled quick win is a simple fix. It's, it's uh, related for people that want to start contributing on the project. So if you want to just have a look at it, go on GitHub for the issues and look for the quick win label. As I said, everything, uh, everything is Ruby. Vagant is written in Ruby, and plugins have to be written in Ruby. So everything is on, is on GitHub. And thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions. No, um, my only question was maybe I missed that, but uh, how did you actually um, import the settings you need um, to access uh, your cloud? Do you just source um, the OpenStack file or how actually? Because the credentials? Because, because yeah. in. Is it in the Wagon file? Attends, first, I'll partage it. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Okay. This, is my <coughs> this is my configuration. Uh, I just give the, okay. the um, Keystone URL. And then we resolve the catalog uh, in the response, and we have access to Nova, Neutron, and if okay, but you're using uh, the environment uh, for the password. Yeah, just to not to show my password too. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 You have an issue to automatically detect this. Oh, there was a mailing list discussion uh, before the summit uh, talking about uh, various vagrant providers for OpenStack. Uh, I'm sure you guys are aware you're not the only people that have taken a stab at this. So there was some talk on that mailing list thread. It seemed like it'd be a good idea to bring this stuff into StackForge, try to bring a few projects together. It looks like you guys have a lot, you've done a lot, you are pretty got a long way to go. So uh, are, would you be interested in moving on to StackForge sure, and trying to start it? Yeah, why not? Why not, yes. Did, did you guys see the mailing list post no. or were you involved in that? I have some filters and I think I did that. Uh, but uh, uh, there was a syntax that you used in this file where you did uh, like a, I mean, it looked like a bit shift that I'd, I'd never seen before. You were updating one of the dictionaries. What the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's Ruby. <laughs> no, no, no. I just tried it in IRB. Like, is networks a dictionary? I couldn't, is that like a dictionary update? Network is, is in a way, I ah. think, yeah. The this syntax? That syntax there. Ah, you just push any time in the, in, in the array. 
Oh, it's a list. Yeah, it's a list. And actually, in the provider, the list is already initialized. Magic. It's initialized <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as a empty list, as an empty list, and we just push an item in the list. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, volumes. So in some of the Vagrant machines that I'm managing, like I would like to be able to have just give me a volume of this big, right. and I want it to be associated and destroyed with the instance. Is it's that something you're looking map. at on yeah. the roadmap? We have, we have an looking issue I think we recorded for. Yeah. Yes, actually, what, what I think I to do is to is to put a, a volume name, and if it don't find it don't find a volume with this name, we create it, and if a volume exists, just mount, just attach it. Uh, just I didn't show the the page. We we explain a lot of options, but we are we have uh, we support many many options. For instance, uh, in the VM configuration, you have availability zone, security groups, user data. Uh, we are adding more uh, every day. But uh, if you think something is missing, just look at the README, and uh, you will see uh, maybe the option is already here. Hi. Yeah. Um, great work, by the way. Uh, we happen to use another version of a Vagrant OpenStack provider that you probably have heard of yeah. by now. Um, so my question, and I hope I don't come across as rude or anything, but uh, why did you start your own thing instead of building on top of what already existed? You want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, at the beginning, we first tried the other plugin, but it was uh, something like one year ago and a little more in February or uh, January, and the plugin the, was not really active. And we had a lot of ideas, and we thought that if we make a lot of pull requests, uh, we're not sure this to be accepted. and. There were no tests on the, on the other provider. We wanted to have a full tested project, and so we and we had a lot of ideas. So we we have take the choice to create a new one. So there's also, there also a technical reason. The other provider was using Fog as a dependency. Uh, Fog is a multi-cloud uh, Ruby, li Ruby library, and we are not using it because we don't. We wanted to remove this dependency. We wanted just to have a simple uh, API client to have to do really what we want on the OpenStack, to be really OpenStack specific and not use a library that is common to other clouds. And f for, for instance, uh, at the moment, we only support Keystone API version 2, but we plan to support the version 3. And I think uh, even now, uh, Fog does not support the Keystone version 3. So there are some limitations like that, and we wanted to get rid about that. So that's, that's actually a good thing, because I had an issue with the other plugin, that uh, there was some change in the back end in the HP cloud that completely broke Fog. So I had the, that brand Vagrant plugin, you know, not being usable for about a month or a month and a half. So I think it would be good that you're not using Fog for the dependency. Yeah, I think if you if you have a look at the source code, yeah, you will see that the, actually, the so. client the, the the client code to call the API is really simple because the OpenStack API is well designed and it's simple enough to to call it directly. Yeah, we just we just wrap the API call in. A, this is for getting all the floating IPs for line of Ruby, and we can do anything specific to OpenStack. No, we don't do that, yeah. We can do we do script. Yeah. Yeah, it's a two hundred two accepted. Uh, it's an asynchronous HTTP call. Uh, sorry, the question was uh no, we ju actually we, we no, just no, I will repeat the question. The question was when I did Vagon destroy uh, the we had the response from the CLI, so deleting server. But when I was in my web interface, the instance was still in state deleting. So the question is, why? Uh, why do you, is it? Why do we have this? So it's one simple. We just do here an HTTP call on the destroy uh, endpoint. Don't remember. And once we have the 202 accepted uh, answer, 
we just go. Okay. And we leave the, uh, the, provi the open stack do its job, but we don't check for the, uh, if it's actually deleted. Actually, we, add, we have the same problem. If we, for instance, uh, type uh, vagrant uh, suspend, and then you, you type vagrant resume, uh, you can try to resume the instance, or it's still suspending, so you get an error. And this is a bug file in your the system, and it, it's uh, under development to correct. There's the fixer is in the room. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Maybe yeah, it's a good idea to, to check. Yeah. Yeah. Can you if you know more? Um do you um Yeah. We had the question um, we had the question at Numergy. But uh it's the problem is where we want to set the line. Uh we like to in, in s to be able to use it templates, but only for the configuration of your tenant. If, for instance, if you want some network, some router, some firewalls, we we think about uh, adding it, but it's not set uh, right now. Maybe you uh, actually uh, a starting point is Vagrant is uh, to make it easy to set up an open stack environment. And when you use Vagrant, you actually don't want to uh, know about two technical details about the underlying system. And when you're using it, it requires a lot of knowledge about OpenStack. So, so I think it's a bit beyond the scope, but we often have the question, so maybe we can add it to for, for advanced OpenStack users. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting because um, we often have the question. Yes. Um, I had a question about the takeaway plugin, which I guess you guys are still working on. Um, it's kind of a separate use case, but after you run takeaway push and you sort of stash the instances and the sort of thing, if you run vagrant destroy on that same uh, yeah, you host, need to on the host that, will that tear it down, or is there a way that I could like stash a vagrant environment I for some other developer to check out the stuff I've been working on while I move on to the next ticket? Oh. Actually, it's not, it's not um, fully defined, but first thing, if we wanted to do a separate plugin, because actually a uh, Vagrant takeaway can be used with other systems at OpenStack. You can use it for with, uh, uh, AWS, for instance. Is that a use yeah. case that you guys are looking at, or what is the yeah. What we want to yeah. do is have the Vagrant takeaway uh, plugin and add some hooks in our provider when, where we will say uh, each time we do an action that modifies the Vagrant directory, we sync, we push to uh, the storage system, yeah. and so everything is already is always in, uh, synced between the two uh, instances. You see, the configuration can be activated or deactivated, and if it's activated, Vagrant uh, OpenStack provider will check if the plugin Vagrant takeaway is installed on the system. It will always sync with the external system the state of the machine. Oh, you mean multiple versions of the no, same? Oh. It's not, but it's a, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, multiple versions of uh, m multiple instances with multiple versions of your uh, environment. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's a good idea. D didn't thought about it, but uh, yeah. Other questions? Tom, thank you very thank much. You.